So why does this photo not look like this photo? Well, there's quite a few reasons for that. One of the biggest problems that most astrographers start to face is they're not spending enough time with integration. Definitely get as much integration time as possible. So when you're going outside, you wanna make sure you stay on the same target for as long as possible. Stay on it, capture as much data as possible. And also, when you're photographing that data, make sure your data is in focus. Definitely, you wanna make sure everything you do is in focus because if it's not in focus, you're just gonna get blurry mess out throughout your whole image no matter how much integration time you took. Another thing I like to really emphasize is go to a dark site. Without a dark site, you're not gonna get very good images, mainly like you're gonna have gradients to deal with, you're gonna have a lot of other artifacts to deal with that you will ha won't have to deal with in a dark site if opposed to a light polluted site. If you're in a light polluted site, well, you're gonna have to take a lot more integration time compared to a dark site, we're gonna have a lot less time spent, but a lot more um, valuable data anyway, because you're gonna have less artifacts and whatnot. Now you wanna also make sure you're using the right camera settings for your equipment. Now for example, if you have a Canon EOS Rebel T7, the best ISO may be 1600 based on where you're uh, located, like in a light polluted dark site. Another thing I recommend is don't crank up your shutter speed way too high, mainly because you get star trailing or possibly overbeloating, meaning like the stars in the image will be too big and you won't be able to remove it in post-processing. Another tip for your nebulae photographers out there, definitely make sure you take use of narrowband filters such as H-Alpha S203. Especially if you do nebulae, even if you have like a modified DSLR, if you're doing stuff besides like the Orion Nebula, like for example, if you're doing the North American Nebula, California Nebula, etc., Definitely use narrowband filters. This will really um, eliminate a lot of light pollution and pull out the actual nebulae inside of the um, image. You definitely wanna get most of the details inside of the image and not really the light pollution. So I definitely recommend narrowband filters. Another thing I recommend doing is definitely make sure your processing is very subtle, meaning like you don't over process anything, but you make sure that you still process it enough to where it looks great. Um, you don't wanna over process, but you wanna process in like, gradual steps. You don't want to instantly process the whole thing. It's just going to look ridiculous. That could be part of the reason why your images may not look that great. Now you might be wondering, Asher, is equipment really that important? And the answer is to an extent. Um, if you have really bad equipment, like really, really, really bad, um, then I definitely recommend maybe trying to upgrade. But if you're like a, even a simple rate, like a DSLR and lens and a tripod and an intervalometer, like that's already good enough. You don't need the super expensive equipment until of course you are ready for it and you feel the urge to upgrade because you wanna get better images or more zoomed in images or et cetera. Um, it won't necessarily make you better images. It might make you more zoomed in images. It might make you more like higher resolution images, but it won't make you crispier, better results uh, most of the time. Now, if certain lenses can do this, like if you have a crap lens versus a really expensive lens, but there is workarounds for that, like processing is an example. If you get really good at processing, you can definitely get better images, um, even with a crappy setup. For example, um, I just took this photo of the sun with my equipment today, and um, yeah, I know it looks like an eclipse. Well, uh, I added the little eclipse teaser part on it, but um, I thought it looked pretty cool. That was not a bad image for just a simple iPhone, and there was no tripod either. I just held it up with the manual camera app, not paid, it was free. A manual camera app, um, Blackmagic um, camera, I believe. I just held it up to the sky in the sun, got a beautiful image of it. I think it's pretty good. The equipment is not the primary reason that astrographers get great images, it's because they are careful about how they go about it. And if you want more proof about this, well, this video will prove you exactly why a DSLR has way more potential than you think for astrophotography. Anyways, until next time, clear skies.